Incoming message from Commodore Tai. Hello all, your Commodore Tai Cole's here. Hold on, I'm missing someone. Computer, you know who I want to beam over. Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Dang it, Ty, you did it to me again. Uh, no worries. You can watch it anytime on Disney+. Plus. Uh, today we're going to be watching Episode 5, Chain of Command. Wait, what's the Chain of Command? It's the chain I beat you with until you figure out who's in command. <laughs> okay, so we start off with the Maximals investigating the uh, stone structure, the stone hedge, in quotations, that we saw in Beast Wars Part 2. This isn't a natural stone formation. Somebody somehow built this thing. Bringing back the continuity, and it's so soon, you gotta love it. Yes, and then all of a sudden, we get a sneak attack by the Predacons. No a John Crystal too small, I always say. No one would have seen that coming, right? Exactly. So the Predacons attack, but yet the Maximals manage to fend them off quite easily. And then after Optimus does his double barrel on the uh, Flyers, Pterosaur has the brilliant idea and fires on it, exploding the Energon. Stupid dinosaur bird. Well, you got to expect it from him. Dinosaurs did have brains of the size of a golf ball. I think you're being a little too generous for Pterosaur, especially considering the next episode. This Go is ahead. when they send the signal to space. <laughs> then we cut to, like, a day or two later, and... Suddenly, there's some sort of giant gold bean on top of the uh, standing stones. And the Predacons initially think it's a stasis pod. Hmm. Fire! Incoming stasis pod! Plot vector to crash point. Which kind of does make sense. I mean, uh, they were fully expecting the stasis pods to land eventually. And it kind of looks like it might be the same size as one, but no, it's a giant gold bean. Yes, looks like somebody answered that signal. Optimus and Dinobot go, and guess who's there? Megatron and Waspinator. Whatever this fascinating device is, we Predacons claim it as our own. Yes. Oh. Megatron, terrorize! My question is, why didn't they send both flyers again? Big enough for Megatron to make an appearance? I think they just wanted Megatron to witness uh, Optimus Primal's death. Because guess what? Optimus does get absorbed into space object. Dinobot manages to get back to the Autobot base and tells them Optimus Prime has fallen in battle. Not before he thinks it's in a maximal torture chamber. Maximal torture chamber. Hey! Hey, we were hoping that maybe the innocent orphan baby could tell us what happened to Optimus. Optimus Primal was terminated. Yeah, that never actually made sense to me. Does he do, uh, is there like some sort of Predacon propaganda back on Cybertron that the Maximals are secretly torturing Predacons into, you know, giving up information? Maybe. You could never, uh, know what the Predacons are doing half the time. We do know yeah. from, in a later episode that, uh, the Predac are the uh, Maximal uh, leaders do do some questionable things. Ravage! <clears throat> Sorry. <laughs> and then <laughs> we uh, see that since Optimus is considered dead, 
they have a power struggle for leadership between Rat Trap and Dinobot. Dinobot thinks he should because he calls himself the most powerful. And Rat Trap for who knows what reason. Certainly Scrap and I, as the most powerful of the group, shall replace him. Anyone who disagrees may challenge me now. And let's face it, Dinobot is probably the most powerful, except for maybe Rhinox. But Rhinox doesn't seem to want to be a leader of any kind. He's happy just tinkering with his toys. So Dinobot wants to have a duel to find out who becomes leader. I guess that's his Predacon coming out. But they do it the maximal way, by secret ballad. Wait, we're not Predacons here. We'll settle the chain of command in traditional, maximal fashion. By secret ballot. There's nothing that can go wrong with democracy. I guarantee it. So as they are uh, doing the ballots, it's a tie. And... <sighs> Another vote for Dinobot. It's a tie. Hey! What? Which one of you, you traitors voted for the Predacon? Okay, maybe one thing wrong with democracy. <laughs> but as they're still bickering, they hear the faint sound of a Maximals, come in! Are you receiving? Maximal command base! This is Optimus! And he lays down the law. Rat Trap, you're in charge. Rat Trap! You're in charge. I'm sure you worked out the chain of command peacefully. And you got to give Dinobot some credit. He doesn't actually argue this point. Once Optimus puts Rat Trap in command, he just abides by it because he has respect for Optimus. And you got to actually, you got to give him props for that. Yep. And so we go back to the Predacon base and we hear that Megatron and Waspinay were almost uh, completely destroyed as well. Megatron back! Megatron back! Scorponok alone with Tarantulas and Pterosaur! <laughs> Very bad! You and Waspinator will return to us badly damaged. Yeah. But one quick dip in the uh, repair pool and they're all good. So Megatron decides, okay, I gotta have this. So Megatron sends Scorponok and Waspinator to go protect the space objects where hi himself, Tranchus, and Pterosaur attack the maximal base for some reason. Quickly, Scorponok, you and Waspinator get back to the Standing Stones and guard that alien probe. As for us, this is a perfect opportunity. Yeah. Again, he doesn't send the flyers to do one task and the ground troops to do another. He splits them up. Yeah, it, maybe Megatron isn't as good a tactician as he thinks he is. Also, during the siege on the maximal base, you finally see Megatron versus Dinobot, and it looks like Dinobot is clearly kicking the crap out of Megatron. <laughs> Maybe that's why Megatron didn't want to face Dinobot for leadership, because he knew Dinobot would whip him senseless. Really? Because I remember in Jurassic Park, the T-Rex whooped the Velociraptors. Well, I guess they did the uh, role reverse in this one. The Predacons end up retreating, and they head to the stones. I suggest we withdraw, Megatron. The true prize and reinforcements await us at the Standing Stones. Yes, the alien probe. Withdraw at once! The Maximals follow them to see if they can retrieve Optimus. Because, as I said, Rhinox plays with his toys and he built a device that's going to be able to suck Optimus out of the giant gold bean. The device to extract physical molecular structure from an alien probe? Man, i got to be a miracle worker. As well, during the uh, attack on the Maximal base, Rat Trap gave Dinobot an order, but because Dinobot was... Uh, Tangled up with Megatron, he couldn't do it. After the battle, Dinobot actually apologized to Rad Trap for disobeying his order. Something Rad Trap would have never done with Optimus. You were selfless in putting that shield back online. I ought to have followed your command. I 
am dishonored. And again, I, that just calls back to what I said earlier about Dinobot has so much respect for Optimus Primal and now following orders that he apologizes even though he had really good reasons for not following the order. In just five episodes, he's got quite a bit of character growth going on. Exactly. And it shows you how honorable Dinobot is. You know, Rat Trap could have tried to pull something similar to Megatron because Megatron and crew just got beat, but they're heading towards the stones. And Rat Trap sends the full crew over to the Standing Stones as well. Now both bases are abandoned. And we get yet another battle between the Maximals and Predacons. This is the third time they've fought each other in this one episode. Well, you gotta sell those toys, show them that they they can battle. Yep. And also, this is the first time we see Waspinator get slagged. <laughs> Not only is it the first time he gets slagged, he gets slagged with Rhinox's Chain Guns of Doom. Granted, that's a fan name, but there's still a really cool interpretation of his Beast Wars weapon. Because the weapon kind of looks stupid, but the chain guns are awesome. Exactly. And at the end, Optimus is saved. Look who's back. And feeling pride. Predacons retreat. And there's a million questions asked, what's happen going to happen next? Yeah, Dinobot ends it when it comes to the episode talking about the aliens who made the Standing Stones. Because he, he's basically like, why would they actually want to know what's going on? Like, why did they capture Optimus Primal? Uh, what do they want to know? Uh, who are they? And he ends it with... And more importantly, who are they? Friends, enemies, or something more? Hmm. Good question. Huh. And we never do, we never actually learn that much, but it just shows that there's a third player in this war. Exactly. But there's one thing that was missing in this episode. How many lights do you see? Long chain of command. <laughs> uh, Wait, would that make Rat Trap Jellico since he's the substitute commander? Possibly. <laughs> I think uh, Rat Trap's a dick. A lot of people consider Jellico a dick. I don't know. I always like Jellico. That's a whole different show. All right. Go ahead and send me back so I can watch uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. And don't forget to check out my reviews on Falcon and Winter Soldier as well. I'm sure you'll put a link in the description. Later, folks. So for your Commodore Kai Coles and the Vile One himself, live long and prosper. The hailing frequencies are closed. Thank you for watching the video. Hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, watch one of my many other videos, and if you like what you see, you can support the channel by donating to my PayPal. So, for Commodore Kai, live long and prosper all, and for now, until next time, the hail and frequencies are closed.